but this is very exciting. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you? Matt Sarah, how hey, are Matt, you? Hey, hey, nice hey. Jim, we're recording. You're right over here. You're, you're going. Yep, it's good to see you. You got this. Dude, you're the skinniest one in the room here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look Thank at the you. size of you. I think the UFC needs another uh, uh, light heavyweight. That was a chapter of my life long gone. Oh, man. Good. Uh, plus, uh, I was in shape 40 pounds ago. <laughs> yeah? Well, I'll tell you, you look good. And from what I've heard, you know, besides being uh, a major brain, you had some brawn. First of all, you're a big dude in person. I, don't, I didn't realize he was such a big guy. Yeah, he's a very big If big somebody guy. walked in here, they go, who's the UFC fighter? A former fighter. They'd look at Neil. Yeah. <laughs> Used to be a wrestler in my day, yeah. But that that was a different day. But undefeated in high school, in high school, true? yeah, I, yeah. I was I was ten and zero my senior year. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. You yeah. ever come close? In fact, to people losing? got upset because one of the matches I didn't pin the guy, and they oh yeah, so they counted that as like a loss. <laughs> uh, yeah, I pinned nine out of the ten. Well, were you bigger than everybody else by a long shot? Or no, no, they can't be because you're, you're, no, it's, it's a weight, weight class. It's a weight class. So, so I, I was 190 pounds. So you were just a ferocious wrestler. Well, I I, ha I was really flexible. I had good strength. I was taller than almost anyone I wrestled, which meant they had bigger muscles. Yeah. Okay, because if they're the same weight and you don't, there's no body fat clearly. Yeah. So they got to have bigger muscles if they're shorter than I am and weigh the same. So I had to keep them at distance. Mm. You know, I had good yeah. leverage. I have really long arms. Yeah, yeah. I do an ankle pick and and I can I can uh, cradle you. With, you know, and get yeah. you and pin you. Because I can wrap my arms around whatever you are. I can wrap my arms around you, it, and that yeah. gives me a grip. But if I get too tight in, and you get these these ectomorph yeah. guys with these muscles it's hard to just, make space uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no pun intended <laughs> oh, oh, hard to oh, make space. oh Sorry. where's, the, where's the drum you gonna have a, where's the band to I know he's very bad with the sound <laughs> that was a sound effect moment if hard to make, but it is true with the smaller grapplers when they're tight on you it's harder to make when they're space. tight it's like mm. it's like a lock lock it's like a like a lock tight yeah. right because they'll get me in there it's like oh damn have you, have you? Because you're naturally a grappler. I mean, ten, I mean, you're talking about your being undefeated in high school. And, well, that uh, was then. But wait, wait. Yeah. Excuse me. Go ahead. Just to be clear. For sure. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to get you a fight no, in mixed no, martial no. arts. <laughs> By the end, we're going to be. Where's the mat? <laughs> Let's take this outside. Uh, no, just to be clear. Yes. When I got to college. Yeah. Then I started wrestling, like guys from like Iowa and oh, yeah. you felt the difference like corn levels? fed guys yeah. off the farm that were hauling cows yeah. and I said whoa this is another league this is another thing going yeah. on here so I was that so I had a losing record until my senior year in Harvard of, of college yeah oh okay yeah so I didn't even know. I guess Harvard has a wrestling team. You always think of Harvard as you don't think of them in doing any physical. Activity. What do you think? The Mandy Pansy? What What do you think? No, just too busy. <laughs> no, just too busy studying. I mean, yeah. Uh, I also rode, but I preferred <clears throat> wrestling. And, you rode what? Uh, well, I heavyweight eights. Oh wait, wait oh, ro ro oh, R O W. R O W. Oh, I think it, like R O D E. Rowing to me, I do it in the gym once. It sucks. I can yeah. row for two minutes. How long? If you're rowing, how long could you row for in a workout when you were in 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 that shape and you were doing that? Oh well, so it's it's. I mean, it's highly aerobic. So if, if you get it, if you, once you get in a rhythm, you, you know, you do it for an hour. You know, typically, um, there. Well, actual races take about six to eight minutes, depending they on do. yeah, two thousand meters. Is a Harvard rowing team good? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, their their coach for the longest time coached the Olympic team. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. Well, think about it. Rowing is like very sort of Ivy Leaguey, you know. Yeah. And so you get the Ivy League coach to coach the Ivy Leaguers who went to prep school where they where they row. You know, how many schools in the hood have a rowing team? Right. <laughs> you know, right. none, basically. So it was kind of an elitist sport in that regard. I don't mean that attitudinally. I just mean it in terms of access to opportunities. And who had opportunities to try yeah, exactly, it. Exactly, sure. exactly. So, so I did it because it, it was intriguing. Right. And But I, since I wrestled in high school, I ultimately kept wrestling in college. And, you and I much Bronx. preferred it because if you lose, you lost. Yeah. You don't blame on anybody else. Yeah. And so what I was saying was, uh, though I was taller, I was, I was quicker than almost any of my opponents. I was quick for my size. Ah. So they couldn't, they didn't see that coming. Athletic. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Did you, uh, did you have any fights growing up? Uh, great question. Yeah. Uh, I have completely calm <clears throat> temperament. So no, I'm the only person, only guy I know who never got into any fights K through 12. But you got some aggression out though uh, in high school. Like you, you, you were physically, you know, you did. Get so I always, I asked myself if I didn't wrestle as a tandem thing in my life, where would I just be looking to kick somebody's? Ass? <laughs> no, no. But I had a uh, one guy pulled a knife on me. For what? Where were you? 
You mean, what did I do to earn it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, well, I was saying, what the hell kind of question? Where, where'd you get this guy? What, what, was, what was his reasoning? We're going well, into the his, mind of the man. What was yeah. his reasoning? What was his reasoning? Okay. Yeah. It was, in fact, my fault. Here it is. It was one of these late winter snowfalls where the snow is heavy yeah. and wet and makes an awesome snowball, yeah. okay? I'm like a March a... snowfall. Oh, no. Yeah, All right? I see what this is going. So at lunchtime, this big snowball fight breaks out. I'm on one side. It's the, no one chose sides. It just, it, it just broke up that way, all right? If you're on the left, you're for that side, or you're on the right, yeah. all right, on the left side of the field. So he's standing there. Back then, he, he would have been known as a greaser, okay? Yeah. His hair greased back, leather jacket, rode a motorcycle. Yeah. He was sitting against a car with his girlfriend under his arm. Oh, no. Okay. Right. Non-combatant. All right. And so... I said, wow, okay, let me throw a snow. I wonder if I can hit him. But he was a non-combatant. I threw it. This is, went far. It sailed through this guy, and it landed right on his chest. And you ever see a snowball hit a hard surface? It just scatters everywhere. Yeah. And this must have seriously embarrassed him in front of his girlfriend. Plus, yeah. he's a greaser, so he's got that man thing he's got to yeah. withhold. So then out come the racial F, nigga, you come, you come, nigga, and I said, don't you come back or I'll cut you, okay, so. How did he know he saw you throw? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 uh. and so, so the, the period ends and everyone's going back into class and he goes and parks himself in front of a door and so I just slowly walk to a different door. But then he walks at a rate that will perfectly intersect mine. How's your adrenaline? How's your how's you? How are you assessing? That's this a good situation? question. So I'm going to tell you. It's a great <laughs> question. So now we meet at the door, and he pulls out his knife. I remember it's a 007, which has a locking blade and a wooden handle locking blade. It's about six inches long. Slightly illegal. There was an illegal length and an illegal length. Nah. This one just came a little like the the the, the curved tip nah. just was enough there. Little but it locks in place so that it doesn't fold back sure. and cut your fingers. He, and I, so he does it, and he's standing in front of me. I don't think he knew how big a person I was yeah. when he made these threats. Because I walked yeah. up to him, I, I looked down to him yeah. by one or two inches, and he was in boots. <laughs> so that I don't. So that I might have been my height back a little, a little bit. <laughs> okay. So then I remember this, you know, in West Side Story, where the knife is reflecting the sunlight. You know, yeah. before the fight begins. Yeah. So all I'm thinking is West Side Story. But anyhow, <clears throat> so he said. Uh, you hit my leather jacket. And so I said, okay, um, how much ego do I give a shit that I have at this point? Oh, can I say that? No, <laughs> say it. Yeah. Celebrate it, Neil. I'm being honest about what yeah. was going yeah, through my good. head. Can, right? This guy's got a knife, and he's, he's, he's brand, is, what's that the right word? Brandish? Brandishing. Yeah, yeah, brandishing the knife. So I said, all right, um, I know I'm faster than this guy. I'm captain of my wrestling team. Yeah. If this gets to the ground, I got him, but he's got a knife. I have yeah. to get the knife off him. He's not a weak guy. He's still a kind of big... Yeah. He, I'm 190. He might have been 175 pounds, something yeah. like that. So, you know, he's not a skinny, wimpy yeah. guy. It would yeah. require some... I said, I could take care of this, but let's say I do kick his ass. There's still four months left of school. Yeah. Okay? He could be waiting around any corner yeah. just to get sure. revenge. Yeah. The, revenge is worse than the first time out. Sure. Okay? And then I said, so that's if I beat, if that's if I kick his ass. Um, also, if I do kick his ass, I could get cut in the act. And by then, I had already been accepted at Harvard, planning to major in physics, knowing I want to get a PhD in astrophysics, knowing that my career, I, I already had my, I was already planned. I knew what I wanted to do with yeah. my life. So I said, is the risk of dying however small that is, or the risk of getting maimed mm -hmm. permanently or partial or temporarily, is that, uh, is my ego in this moment worth that? Right. And I said, no, it's not. So I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> but not in a timid way. I just, I just straight, yeah. straight. I said, I'm sorry I hit your leather jacket. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to say was, but you got to admit it was a good throw. <laughs> but yeah. No, but I, I just, I didn't want, so I said, sorry I hit your leather jacket. Uh, I'll make sure that doesn't happen again. And that was it. And what, what is he going to, what, what do yeah. you, if you, if, 
he was ready. Was, I felt like Gandhi in this moment, yeah. right? He's got weapons, and I don't come at him with a weapon. If you have a weapon, yeah. you are expecting weaponry. Yes. Yeah. Right? This It's a mental thing at this point. Yeah. So, I, so I, that's what I did. And then I just walked past. He said, all right. Grum, he grumbly, all yeah. right. And then he folded back up the knife. And now I knew he wouldn't be waiting behind any corner. I'm smart, yeah. Right? Right? And I'm off to college. No, who the hell knows where he is now? Yeah, yeah, you made the right move because that one dumb thing... You know, and you went on to be who you are, and you're promoting another book. Um, and I'll, I'll mention the name of the book, Astrophysics, People in a Hurry. And uh, That was not a good segue to the book. terrible. <laughs> Here, here's why I did this segue. Who, who taught you segues in this business? He told, no, he told me we don't have much time, so I wanted, I wanted to make sure that your plug did get in there. Okay. The no, book is fine. great. Thank you. I, I had another question for you before What's we even that? talked about physics. What's this green thing you're drinking here? It's it's juice, but I'm trying to this get... This is not juice. I don't know what that it's is. It's a green... It's a juice-like substance. <laughs> <laughs> I should correct okay. myself. So uh, did you have a lot of, like, a, a, a racial strife growing up? Did you have to deal with any racism, or did you kind of get lucky and not have to deal with it? So no, there's, I mean, there's nothing compared to my parents' generation. Right. I mean, that's uh, you know, all you have to do is wonder how bad it is. Just ask somebody, ask someone one generation before Older, you. Yeah. They'll have stories that will completely override anything you're telling them. Just that's how that is. Right. Uh, same with women. If you want, if you say, oh, it's terrible for women to ask any woman a generation ago sure. what they put up with, what they had to put up with, what society didn't recognize or accept. So. At the time, yeah, there was there was racism, but it was I was so focused that it was like I didn't care because you could if if you cared about every racist moment, you'd be dead. Okay, so you don't if you have enough drive. I had a fuel tank of I'm, I care about this universe. I've known it since I was nine. My first visit to the Hayden Planetarium here, I said I want to be an astrophysicist. I was called by the universe, and I'm I said I'm coming, universe. Give me a few years, <laughs> and so. So yeah. So what would it? In what ways do it? Does it manifest? Taxi doesn't pick you up, uh, and it stops for the white person sure. farther down than you. And I'm and I'm not small, so don't tell me you didn't notice me, sure. right? Yeah. And so there's little things like that. Most of these. So back then, you'd go to a record store to buy records or CDs. There would always be a security guard following behind me, right. acting like they're browsing through the thing. Yeah. But and I would go change lanes, and they come change aisles and so you can track them so yeah. so it's the bad part is you have this awareness that society thinks you're a criminal and I'd walk on a street and people would cross the street to go to the other side this sort of thing and that's just a weird way to grow up right. it's like your own culture doesn't see you for what you are they see you for what you fe what they fear and so I said to myself Provided they are not between me and my goal, I just will just walk around it, climb over it, dig under it. But I'm going to get to the other side with or without them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. In one case, I, I was into big oversized wristwatches back before oh, yeah. digital watches. They had tachometers, time in multiple cities. I was just into timekeeping. By the way, my people invented timekeeping devices, astro astronomers of yesteryear. They did. Yes. We, we cared about tracking time. Okay, so so maybe it's deep in me. I, I was yeah. feeling the vibe, I was feeling the love through t through the, the through history. So I had this big and uh, one that I bought from Macy's. The sweep second hand. No one even knows what that is anymore. The thing that tracks the seconds. Sure. The sweep second hand fell off inside the crystal of the watch. So I took it to a, a jeweler, and so I, I'd like this repaired. And the jeweler said, after a pause, and looked at me, and the jeweler said, oh, "I can't touch this. It's a stolen watch." And I'm, here I am thinking, wow, I wonder, how did Macy's steal this watch? I'm, I'm yeah. like, that's how naive I was, because I'm just me, yeah. right? I'm just, why sure. would I think that this whole world thinks I'm a criminal? Yeah. But he's asserting that it's stolen, because I am handing them this watch that he judges has no, doesn't belong with me, on as a, as a, on me, as a 14-year-old black kid growing up in the Bronx. And so it must have been stolen, was his conclusion. And I'm thinking... Did Macy's know this was stolen? <laughs> yeah. yeah, a very naive thought at the time. But that kind of thing would happen. But they're not between me and my academic goals, and so I just kept pushing. That's all. It's interesting. I've never yeah. asked you that before. Yeah, and, and, and plus, I never was in a fight. Yeah, I, 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 I could walk away from if I was a non. I, I just didn't care. I don't have any. My ego was not there. By the way, uh, here's a good segue. Right in the last chapter of the book, <laughs> called a cosmic perspective, learning about the universe is the, the surest, most systematic way to dismantle your ego. Because you learn how small you are. Right. We are. How yeah. small Earth is in the universe. How, how insignificant our presence is in time and in space. And 
this can actually be liberating because then you realize how much baggage you were carrying thinking you were special. And then you realize how much DNA we all have in common, not only with one another, but with all life on earth. Cause you can have a cosmic perspective, not only from the universe, but from other sciences as well, biological cosmic perspective. So for example, in your lower gut, in one centimeter of your lower gut lives and works more microbes, more bacteria than the total number of humans who have ever been born in your lower gut, one centimeter of your lower gut. So you can say, well, I'm greater than the bacteria because I am human and they're just bacteria. However, if you upset the bacteria, they're in charge, okay? They'll tell you how often they're gonna send you to the bathroom, okay? Is it every seven minutes? Is that your preference or every 12? So then you realize that to them, you are a darkened anaerobic vessel of fecal matter. That whatever I'm like that to most people too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and then you realize, okay, however important I think I am, I'm just this vessel to the back to the bacteria. But in fact, we need each other. It, they digest your food for you. That's right. You are a vessel in which they thrive. So, so you're not greater or lesser than they are. We are participants in the same biological entity. That's a cosmic perspective. So we are important and we are special not because we're different, but because we're the same. I have and that's a, a message here. So maybe that was operating deeply within me because I just did not feel I had to fight anybody to defend my honor, my sure. manhood, yeah. my even playing basketball, somebody elbows you. It's not, why'd you elbow me? It's like, okay, sorry. And then you, I keep playing. It's not, I, I just didn't care. Plus... I, I know you know. Tell me your name. I didn't get Matt. Matt. Thank yeah. you. I finally. That's <laughs> Matt, okay. Yeah, hey, Matt. Give me some. There you yeah. Go. Give, look give at those mitts on there. you. Uh, look at that. Look at the size of that hand. Uh, Who's right that? Here, Brock Lesnar. Let me see this. Look at that hand. Yeah. It's a whole other. Uh, what is that? <laughs> <A> knuckle. <laughs> yeah. Those fucking. I don't know. It's huge. Yeah. So Pulls yeah. It's, on it's, you. It's, it's, it's you got no tempo. Three XL hand. Good. I can't get gloves. Get them custom made. I have a specific Why do you go to like question. the big and tall hand shop or something? You, you'd be uh, great at Kimuras, by the way. What's a Kimura? Okay. <laughs> what's a Kimura? I'm going to, listen, I don't know. Listen, in, as far as with the space, besides some Star Wars questions, I'm the worst guy to even interview you. But Kimuras, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you would be phenomenal because you are a former grappler. Yeah. Once you're, it's in you being a listen, grappler. Listen, once I, you know, here's the thing. As a, as a wrestler, the funny thing is, I sometimes yes. I forget that I spent most of my life with my hands on. Yes. The bodies of other men, so that I meet someone new or something. I just my hands are on them and I'm, yeah, I'm touching right. them, and they, they get, sometimes they ah. just get a little. It, yeah. it's not you know, it's funny. I've been, you, you're a phys. I never even made that connection. You just yeah. that's right. Because you, you're you're a yeah. Tactile, I'm a touchy, but it's it's okay. It's, you're a tactile. It's not uncomfortable. You know tactile. Like, I like that. Yeah. I'm tactile. Do you know who's like that? <laughs> Bernard Hopkins. I've interviewed Bernard a bunch of times, and Bernard will sit like literally one inch from me, and he touches. But He's it's in your space. But it's not an alpha. It's not uncomfortable. Yeah. It doesn't feel menacing. It's just you could tell that that's his comfortable way of uh -huh. communicating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a very specific question. Before I forget, I know I'm going to forget that? it. We, we've talked a lot, you and I, about uh, uh, time is, uh, traveling faster than the speed of light. Where's the segue to that? Uh, there, there's none. You, you're just a non segue guy. I really am. Okay. That was my nickname in high school. <laughs> non segue. <laughs> yes, well, it was lack of erections, but I said segues. <laughs> so it was. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, this, um, uh, traveling. The I scene. saw his potty mouth Netflix special. <laughs> yes. Oh, did you see? <laughs> oh man, I, are you still as came potty here mouth going? as it is. Yeah, I said, <laughs> do I, should I really go to his show after <laughs> this? So you're not surprised. <laughs> but you knew me before that, so you know that I'm a sweet boy. <laughs> yeah, he was sweet until I saw his Netflix special. <laughs> yeah, now you know a lot more about <laughs> me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> traveling the speed of light is this fast is uh, fastest speed in, in the universe. Yes, uh, we can never achieve the speed of light. Not but, with material uh, light. Light can go the speed of light, right. but not material objects. Right. But when expanding. During the Big Bang, the universe did travel faster than the speed of light. Yeah, it expanded, expanded faster. Than, yeah. So how is that possible? And is it's it a great do, question? That means you're paying attention to it was, the book. It, it was it was amazing, and uh, I also had a big issue with the Big Bang. I didn't necessarily believe it, but I wanted to know about. Wait, 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 wait. So did you see the opening quote? Of, uh, I, I, the universe is under no obligation to make sense, makes to, sense you. to you. Yes, you, and you're right. So the fact that you go through to say I, I don't believe this, it, the universe really doesn't no, care. No, no, no. Fair enough. But I mean, like, say we were expanding into something that is the same material that our known universe is, how was it able to expand faster than the speed of light? Because nothing in our space is moving through that space faster than light. The fabric of the space itself 
is expanding, and there's no law of physics that prevents that. There's not. Okay, so yeah. there's no law, but there's no. That's way how we can have galaxies ex- uh, in the distant future universe when dark energy overruns everything and it accelerates our expansion. You can take galaxies and accelerate them beyond our horizon out of view. So all the galaxies of the night sky will ultimately be no longer visible to any of us. And that's the source of all of our cosmology. So if we don't have good records that survive into post-apocalyptic civilizations, they will have no idea that the universe ever even had a past. Really? And they'll try to theorize what is going on in the universe, but they will not get the right answer because their, 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 their repository of data will be incomplete. So, hopelessly incomplete. And I lose sleep over the possibility that everything we're doing in this universe, trying to piece it together like this jigsaw puzzle, where we don't even have the, what the thing should look like, right? We're just seeing that the puzzles, the pieces fit and how they fit. I lay awake at night wondering whether we suffer from the same challenge. Is there some chapter of our today's book of cosmology that has been ripped from us that only a prior generation would know anything about, but there are no records passed on right. to us. And here we are trying to figure out the universe, but in fact, without that chapter, it might damn well be impossible. When you're ex- when the universe is expanding. Oh, those Let- almonds over there, can I get some almonds? Sure can, yeah. sir. <laughs> well, the universe is expanding. Yeah. So, you know, we look around, we see stars everywhere, we see galaxies everywhere. Let's just say for the sake of argument, you're in one of the earlier uh, developments of a planet, yeah. and, and you're in the forefront of the expansion. And you're constantly expanding, and you're on the edge of the expansion. So how come you're not able to look back this way and see the universe, and then look ahead and just see pitch black because nothing has expanded that far Oh, yet? because everyone thinks they're in the center of the expansion. But say you're on the edge of it. Well, if you, okay, so if you're on the edge... How come you can't well, watch, look ready, 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 watch, watch. So here I am, I'm a ship at sea, okay? Now I see a ship on my horizon at the edge. Go to that ship. They have another horizon beyond them. Everybody has a horizon, even if you're on the edge of somebody else's horizon. But if you're... if, if so, so they're on your edge, but they're not on their own edge. But if you're on the edge of the universe's expansion... No, it's expanding in a higher dimension than that, so there is no edge. There's not. Is there an edge of Earth's surface? No. You 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 uh, you know to not even ask that question. It's not. You're not a flat earther, are you, Jimmy? Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> ah, Jimmy, no. the, the latest crazy. That has to okay. be something new, okay. right? I, I heard an interesting solution <laughs> to the flat Earth problem. Okay, What's ready? that? Someone said maybe Earth is flat. Okay. But just on six sides, and it's actually a cube. Oh, there you go. So it's kind of like a sphere because it's it's you can go all around it. Like There's a, a bottom, a side, right? There's sure. Australia, right? But in any given side, it's actually flat. I thought, wow, that's an interesting way to reconcile um, the thoughts of scientifically illiterate people. Yes. With- <laughs> <laughs> I tried it. Matt, was it not? Why are we talking-, talking about the universe? I'm on UFC. Can we talk fight seriously? Sure. Sure. I was going to get to that. That's what I'm saying. Did you save time for him to come at me? I, no, I, no, no. I just had a space <laughs> question before, but I'm, you answered it. Uh, but you still could. You're competing. What are you? No, no. Listen, I own a couple of jiu-jitsu schools. Cool. I, I won you're the jiu-jitsu I won- guy. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I, you know, I, Sam Harris does jujitsu. He's a um, a very famous atheist guy, okay. um, uh, public intellectual. Look him up, Sam Harris. I sure yeah. will. Mm-hmm. No, and now you know, I I still stay in shape. I do I stay in shape. Well, rounds of shape, but I do. Ju- <laughs> I do. Ju- <laughs> yeah, yeah, what shape do, is the shape well, you're staying I, in? <laughs> that was, exactly. That, the that shape. was good. That was thank good. you, thank you, Neil. Oh, you're a pear shaped oblate jiu-jitsu. spheroid. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you should try ju- Brazilian jujitsu. I mean, listen, you're busy. Looking up, you know, different. Let me tell you what and- happened. I after I settled into New York, after I'd been got my PhD and everything, yeah. I said, "Let me find out if there's any local wrestling clubs." Yeah. Right. So I went up to Columbia, rolled around okay. with them a couple of times, and then I found out. Oh my gosh! Now it takes me like five days to recover. Yeah. When I used to bounce back the next day, ready. the wrestling's a lot harder as far okay. as it's, on no, your body than, on the body. than okay. Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I mean, you could put a, a kimono on, which is basically a jacket, learn different ways to strangle people. I know it sounds no, crazy, no, but I know no, 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 he likes strangling that. people. He I need it. more ways in my in my yeah. portfolio. But the thing about Brazilian <laughs> not jiu-jitsu, ways to strangle. <laughs> it's not as explosive, and you don't have to use as much strength. It's based on leverage and technique and timing, and it's really scientific. I mean, you you would love. Of it and instead of like the wrestling, the, the, the goal is to have somebody pinned on their black back, shoulders uh pinned on the back. I mean, it just gets started. You learn different ways how to um 
uh, maneuver your opponent and reverse him, submit him from all being on your back, based all on so do leverage you win and in technique. A submission is that how that works? Oh yes, you win in a submission, or if you're not getting a submission, you're getting a dominating position, which is best for a real uh, uh, scenario, a real fight. Okay. Mount position, back with the hooks in, controlling somebody. Yeah, controlling somebody, and mm-hmm. it's just such a you know, again, it's such a beautiful art and. Being um, a brain and being a guy your size, you would probably really love it. So I, I can't say an incident. So I was in, uh, I gave a series of talks these last couple of weeks, both yes. book talks mostly. Yeah. And uh, during the Q&A in one of the sessions, uh, there was somebody who charged the stage, okay? And so the security came out and- <laughs> Crazy flat a slender guy, yeah, no, no. <laughs> so he was sure he knew uh, the answer to the universe. Ask me how the universe yeah. works, I know. So that's the kind of crazies you get wow. yeah. <laughs> in an astrophysics lecture. There you go. <laughs> but anyhow, so security came and they blocked him and then they tried to move him back up the center yeah. aisle. But then his limbs started going. Okay. Yeah. And so then they, they took it to the ground and I was hoping they wouldn't start pummeling him because that just looks yeah. bad. You just want to, so you want to be able to, to take out of action yes. what their arms and legs are doing. Right. And so wrestling, you kind of want to do that. Yes. Right. So, so that way you can't grab me if I do something with your arm exactly. that, that prevents it. Okay, but they, they were not succeeding. So they got back up to come, yeah. and then they finally get him back on his feet, but he's still kicking and screaming. So then they, so I'm kind of narrating this to the people in the upper, upper deck so they yeah. can't see it. Finally, they pick him up, and then they take him out, and they say, that always works. <laughs> Once you remove the person's point of contact with Earth, <laughs> then you have full control over their body. Yeah. They have no frictional points where they can actually execute anything, and you just pick them up and just walk them out, no matter what their limbs are doing. And so, so I, I narrated the the removal. From what the was theater. his? Po- you, you don't know what his point was, or what he's. No, he wanted he wanted to say give his theory of the universe. It probably wouldn't um, have been out good. of order with the questions that were being received. Do you um do you watch mixed martial arts? Do you watch the I, UFC? So so I don't target it in the day, but if yeah. I'm channel surfing and it's there, oh yeah, watch it. Oh yeah, watch. I like watch because the guys are quick. Yeah, especially those kicks with where, where you can take someone out. It's like, oh my gosh, oh. because you have to land it in the right place, exactly. in the right time, at the right height, particularly if it's if it's a blind kick, because if you're turning, and, yes, uh, yeah, well, and you so, can see the art in it. Yeah, oh yeah, the oh yeah, and then do you have good equilibrium? I get very dizzy oh, very yeah. fast. You do well. I, 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 well, so I used to dance. I was a, I was a performing member of three different dance companies. What, so what doesn't this guy do? No, no well, 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 so here's what. So let me back <laughs> up. So one of my challenges as a wrestler was I was very flexible. Yeah, more flexible than most rest. I was flexible as a dancer is flexible. I could do a full split. Nice, um, this sort of thing. And so what it meant was, if you're trying to fold somebody up yeah. in a hold, and they're not well stretched, um, there's a limit to how much you can fold them because their body's just not going to bend that way. Yeah. If I want to prevent myself from being folded into a tiny little cube, <laughs> yeah, then I have I have to use muscles against your force to fold me. Because yes. my body can move that way, that far. Did I make myself sure. clear? Yes. On that? I have to use muscles to prevent you from folding me as much as my body can fold because I can stretch into that position. So, yeah. so I had to make sure I was not in that situation. But what it also meant was if you sweep my leg and lift it up, at the height that no- someone else is normally off balance, my leg is essentially detached from my body. In dancing... There's you. There's a lot of training of body part isolation, where you move a shoulder, yeah. you lift your leg, where the rest of your body does not budge. If if you move a limb and the rest of your body moves, no, that's not dancing. That's you know, that's torquing your yeah. torso with the body. So uh, let me just demo that. I know this is like audio, but I just demo for you guys. We'll leave it, yeah. You're not going to so, twerk for uh, us. Please, are I you? want to see no, the no, other no, guys no, no, Tyson no, no, So you're here, and so. This, He's got Liz kicking out his leg yeah, and behind so him. All this has to be here, and the torso can't move. Okay? You wow, be martial so, artist. I'm just, I'm just uh, jiggling my leg yeah. back. Yeah, but you have great balance. And Look so, at this. and that's... Leg and, back and forth, and he's balancing on one leg. Yeah, that's, and that's he's, all. Look at and this. So wow. forward to the side. It actually looks like something out of a, a kata. <laughs> yeah, he's karate kid. What amazing balance. Yeah, so, so yes, I had balance. So yeah. you guys would try to sweep my leg and presume... I think generally accurately that it would take another person off balance yeah. and they would just, my leg would just move. Balance and if, is so much so And they so could important. not take and my torso off balance because yeah. the, the leg was just swir- swirling around. What kind of dancing was it? So it made, I, made wrestling, I had to invent new ways to, yeah. to, to compete 
as a wrestler. What, what kind of dance? I'm not a good dancer. I mean, people look at me, they think I'm limber. Of course. No! <laughs> <laughs> I love his laugh. That's the first thing I think of. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, yeah, this guy belongs on a, a, a at a ballet stage. Yeah, what kind of, was it? Ballet. So, so Lynn Swan took ballet from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I remember the in the day. Yeah. You're not that old. I'm 48. I'll be 49 in July. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Oh, you look like a kid. Thank you. Oh, let me pinch your cheek. Please. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, come on, oh, you out. too. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. So um, uh, yeah, what yeah. I remember. Was, yeah, uh, who was? And plus, it wasn't just that. Um, who's the guy with the um, the, the folks in the Midwest? Uh, uh, the famous football team from the small town, uh, um, the, the uh, Hoosiers, the Pack, Packers, the oh, Green Bay Green Packers. Bay, yeah. uh, their coach was it Vince Lombardi, right? Yep. So was he? Wasn't he the one that had them do the ballet steps? Oh, I don't know. Um, it might have been. Yeah, yeah. One of them introduced sort of ballet step movement, and then it became kind of standard. That was your dancing was ballet. Oh, so so I had basic ballet training for sort of a general performing sort of stage uh, Broadway dance type. Troop. <clears throat> there was another troupe. So, so we did performance dance for, like to Broadway tunes, that sort of thing. Another one was International Latin Ballroom. Oh, wow. And then a third one was Afro-Caribbean. What's huh. Afro-Caribbean? Uh, so if you just look at any picture of Native Africans dancing, it, there's a lot of sort of torso. Uh, right. Most right. of the music is percussion, and there's a lot of sort of uh, collapse of your torso and, and shake. I mean... That would have been where the first twerking could have ever come. You sure. probably broke it, that out at the clubs back in the day, no? <laughs> <laughs> yes? No, no. So I was like disco man in the 70s. You are. Oh. That was the age and the time. Did you go to Studio 54? No, because yes. I, I, I was away at college when Studio 54 hit. Yeah. Its biggest point is the late 70s, that would have been. And then I went to graduate school after that. So, And then my whole life shifts at sure. that point. But I, I, it's not in this, but it's in my memoir. There's a point where I was like strapped for money in graduate school. They weren't paying you much. And I needed money. And my fellow dancers, uh, the male dancers, said, "Hey, you know, we make extra money down at the strip club. Get out of here! At, you know, the ladies, sure. ladies. You know, like, and tell me you did that. No, 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 no. Hold on. So, can I finish the story, <laughs> <Sorry>. please. So, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hear this. So, so I said, "Wow, because they'll put money in your thing." And, yeah. and I, was, I was in. I was very. I could, like I said, I was limber. I was cut. You know, low sure. body fat. I, I was like, that was I, that was I, that was the time. Yeah. Okay? If ever there was a time I would do that, that was the time. Sure. So I'm down there, and I said, I'll check it out. And so some of my fellow dancers from the company that I danced with came out. All they were wearing was a, an asbestos line jockstrap that had been soaked in lighter fluid and ignited. And they came out oh, scary. dancing to Jerry Lee Lewis's Great Balls of Fire. Wow. Oh, I, in that moment, I see that. I'm embarrassed to say that in that moment was the first time I said, Maybe I should tutor math. <laughs> That's <laughs> Just, funny. And so I said, no, no, no. 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 So yeah. then I went, I tutored math, made a little less per hour, but it's, um, it was like respectable work. Yeah, but the perks with the math tutoring was not as good as they would have been <laughs> at the other job. <laughs> yeah. We would have had a great time. Um, yeah, so that was the, the slow sort of evaporation of uh, the body that I had then, and then I just had to, became the academic than I am now. Did you People ever, say, oh, why don't you go to Dances with Stars or do, like you said, do yeah, some Brazilian... Whoa. But here's my thing. Here's my thing. When I was wrestling, nobody was asking me to give a public talk. Yeah. No one was asking me to be interviewed on anybody's show. That's a chapter of my life that is past. And I'm now doing other things that I could not have done then because I didn't know enough nor was I wise enough. So I don't look back in my life at stuff yeah. when I was in my prime in various things. Let that sit as my prime... When I was priming for what it was that I was in my prime. Now I'm priming in other dimensions of what it is to be alive. Yeah, but you're top of the field of what you do now. Like, there's there's almost nobody in the field. Right? Michu Kaku is very well known, but you're, you're the kind of go-to guy for this. Like, everybody is like, this is the man who can explain complicated things in a very simple way, which is not easy to do, because really smart people, like, you know, Bobby Fischer could not explain chess to right, somebody. Right, yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah. He, yeah. he tried, he had a book, you know. Oh, I know, chess. I, I, wanted, I love him, but just. Chess books, yeah. Yeah, a bit of it. You know. <laughs> then he went, he took a left turn. So yeah. He took a left turn. Ah, the Jews! <laughs> hey, all right, Bobby! <laughs> Bobby, what do I do with the bishop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, Bobby! What the fuck? Wait, wait, wait. Hey, Bobby, what's your religion? Oh, I am Jewish. Yeah, yeah. That was 100%? A, right, 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 yeah. yeah where, that came out of 
Yeah. Something oh, happened there. Yeah, yeah. When you're that smart, sometimes I think mental illness can be tied in with someone who's that brilliant, and and like the the thing that makes you great can kill you. And I think yeah. that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to not have that happen sure. to me. Yeah. Did you ever? Did you ever? I'm did, cool with the Jews. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever do any kind of like partying or anything? Like, did you ever? Oh, did of course, you ever do no, drugs I, or drink, or did you ever like? Oh no, no. I was pretty clean in that regard. Um, oh, for but not because I had some high and mighty. Cleanly. Right. No, it's not that wasn't the motivation. It was I so enjoy what I'm doing, yeah. studying, wrestling, and now you want me to do what? You want you want me now realize how sensitive we are physiologically to exterior influence. So here's your brain, which granted barely functions in real life. Just what does it take to not function, right? right. Just look at mental hospitals, look at prisons, look at you know, this, so now you want to add chemicals to your brain to purposefully disrupt what is otherwise pure rational thought. And I said, I can't, I can't wrap my head around that. I don't, I, I just, no, right. no, I'm not. Now, so there was, so one time in eighth grade, I drank Boone's Farm apple wine before I went to a party with the sole purpose of just getting shit faced. And then after I said, well, why did I do that? What, what? Did you get sick? Uh, no. Not, no, but I was definitely not fully rational, and I just I did not value that state of mind. I know I've known since I was nine. I wanted to be a scientist, and if I, it's, it's not like okay, I want to contemplate the universe now and decode the secrets of nature. Let's see how high I can get before I do this math. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just not so. So I never did. I just never did. So I like a good bottle of wine. You know, yeah. who doesn't like a, you know, with a nice meal? Yeah. But um, it's not just to get shit-faced. That's all I'm saying. You should go to a UFC fight. I think you would enjoy it. I, <laughs> no, but I really do. I think you would like it. I think you would enjoy it. I think you would enjoy watching it. If and as like. far as the jiu-jitsu, I wasn't telling you to, to go into the Pan Ams or anything. I was just going to say for a, for a workout. I love the Pan Ams. They don't get the attention they should get. Yeah. Just as a sport, as an event and yeah, as a culture. Yeah, any big, you it's, know. It's, you know, North and South America. How often do we get together as a, as a collective Western Hemisphere uh, thing. It's a good time. I mean, just, I, I mean, again. So how many? So how many fighting events are in the Pan Am Games? Well, I, I specifically, I was just talking about the jiu-jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu oh. Pan American Games, okay. which I won in 1999. Right. But that's not the point. No. <laughs> I, that is, oh, excellent. Talk about a so, segue, oh, Neil. Oh, wait, wait, yes. so is, it, is it a trophy, a medal? Or a medal? I got a, I got a gold medal as a purple belt. I was so happy. I beat all the Braz I beat all you beat the Brazilians. The Bra where was it? Oh, what, but was it, was it in Brazil? It was in Miami, actually. Oh, okay. You know why? why I remember in Brazil, that, that would have been a little harder. I, I, I won in there Brazil. There would have been guys uh, waiting not, for you at the, I don't at the wanna, back at the exit. I definitely don't want to be that guy, but I won the next year as a brown belt in Brazil in the world championship. You did? Why does it all come back to me? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Why is why I want I want to hear? I just yeah. So why does the belt matter if you win or? It's not win? that wasn't a belt. No, that was I had a belt. That was in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I won. Oh, oh, you compete at this, belt levels. Well, yes, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I yes, know that. in mixed martial arts. No, no, it's whatever totally you got. Different. Pull it out. Of mixed you, martial arts. Yeah, I won that. UFC championship too, but that's a whole different. Ah, yeah. That's another podcast. <laughs> well, that's nobody enough. wants to hear well, about can me. I look here. I'm well, UFC. I don't have to come yeah. here to talk about astrophysics. Yeah, listen, I'm very impressed with your the, the fact that you uh, were quite the wrestler, and I would love one day, one day. Listen, I know you're busy. You want to roll around one day? Well, I want to show. I would love to show you, you some jujitsu. I'm not picking a fight, Neil. You're a big guy. <laughs> you're a big guy, and I got a reputation. I don't need to get strangled by you. All right. But I would love to show I, you some things. Just the art of it, and you'd be like. Oh, I see how this works. I don't have to use a lot of strength. It's all leverage technique and uh, the cosmos. Oh, so he, and, if he gets me yeah. started and I go home and do some calculations, oh, he would love and then it. come back. Oh, he'll come back and <laughs> show me how to get the arm lock better. Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it'd be hey listen it's uh it would it's it's great for the body and mind did you but, stay uh, um without injury how how were you on that i'm, I'm pretty good mm -hmm. i mean i knees and i i and never had a major surgery besides something that um uh, i had Collarbone? some kind of uh i had something called uh th i'm gonna mess up the word for it thoracic outlet syndrome or something where i had uh my artery was getting uh pushed together by my first rib and my collarbone would had to remove a, my first rib out up here, actually, did they make a that woman has nothing to do with my work, my training. Did they make a woman out of that rib? <laughs> no, no, that and it didn't so biblical. That and it so didn't give me any perks, as far as what I heard. But no. happened, Marilyn. I Manson. made a couple out of warm liver. But <laughs> <laughs> where are we going with this? I'm just happy Neil's here. This is potty fascinating. Mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I've warned your listeners if they, in case they haven't seen your Netflix special. Oh, they yet. know I'm awful. If, if they want to, if they want to retain their high level of respect for you. <laughs> 
I don't think their level of respect is very high, to be honest. We have to we, we have to wrap up with you. They're, yeah. they're, is oh my that, God. That's coming from those people. Yeah. We got to. Yeah. Oh okay. no, I got to think. Yeah, okay. okay. That's not coming from us. Mm-hmm. I love you. One of my favorite people. Uh, the book it's is great. Really, you do this in the comedy club here. I mean, in the space right of above. This. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Your it's book great. is great. It's called uh, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. It really is a fascinating. And this is the most we've talked about. Can I boast? You slipped in a boast. I got one here. Ready? Good. Okay, because I didn't get to say this often. I slipped several. Yeah. Okay. Yesterday. The book debuted at number one Ooh, on the New York Times awesome. bestseller list. Congratulations. Hey, I'm so, I'm, I mean, what? Number one? Number one. Debut. Number oh, one. yes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, rightfully so. Yeah, and it's my first time that's happened to me. And that's so amazing. I, would, I, I would say this even if I didn't write it. For me, holy shit. There's a science book at number one. Right. On the nonfiction bestsellers. Ahead of the celebrity tell-alls, yeah. this, the political books. So there's a real appetite out there that I'm delighted to be a servant of. So, are you doing any book signings? Or have you done the ones already? Uh, yeah, I mean, I did these cities, and now I'm just tired. I just want to go to sleep. Okay, well, the book, <laughs> well, the book will speak for itself. What yeah. I've read of it, it it's, it's great. Yeah. Um, it's really easy to read, and it, it just talks about the Big Bang and all this fascinating stuff. And uh, you're just an interesting guy. This was fun. Thank you for Dude, coming. Dude, man, thanks. Always, always thanks. Yeah, Neil. Yeah. And we'll find you, you know, you invite me back, we'll, you know. Yes. I don't, I don't know if I can still rock a singlet, but. No, we're not, no I'm going to get you a kimono <laughs> on me. My well, kimono covers the covers the belly. Oh, no, that's good. I love that. <laughs> I don't train without that thing. <laughs> Let's get a picture before you get started. Yeah, we'll do take that. a quick break and I'll be right back. Thank you. Neil yeah, thanks for Tyson. having me on Thank on the you, show. Neil. Mm-hmm. You're listening to UFC Unfiltered with Jim Norton and Matt Sarah. Now we are back. We took a quick break. We said we were going to take a quick break because we were getting the wrap up because Neil uh, DeGrad Tyson had other places to go. By the way, very, very great interview with him because we talked about a lot of things. Normally it's just uh, astrophysics, which is fine. Yeah. But he wanted to talk about uh, growing up and who knew who he was almost a stripper, the, 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 that racial incident. Like, it's so interesting. But here's what's really interesting. After it's over, that was great. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Matt Serra, I want to say, was it for seven or eight minutes? Oh, easily, yeah. <laughs> rolled around on the floor and showed each other wrestling and jujitsu moves. How great was that? By the time you're hearing this, the link has probably been sent out. We have a five minute video oh, of, was... of Matt showing Neil deGrasse so Tyson fun. a Kimura. And Matt, by the way, and, and he was showing, Neil was showing Matt something. Because Neil's a competitive guy. Oh, beautiful pinning techniques he was showing me. He does, like, right? Oh, it was great. It was great. No, he would, that's why when I was telling him about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I, he, he's obviously a, he's a very, very smart and understatement. Is he one of the smartest guys on the planet? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's up there, right? Yeah. So, I mean, with that brain and you know, being a natural grappler. I mean, look at his, look at his, what he was showing us with his balance and sure. talking about him back in the day. It's in him. He would be amazing in jujitsu. I could tell you right now. The way he was just, and then when we were going over, like I was showing him the Kimura after he was showing me a couple of his pinning techniques, he was loving it. You could see his, because, you know, when he was going to manipulate the balance, well, like, I feel like I could just, I'll do this and then he sees the the leverage and the technique he was I felt I felt he was digging it no he was absolutely and then he wanted to show me something oh that was we were, it was it's great well, started with with Neil going to Matt uh, let me I just want to show you something before I go and he yeah. was showing Matt a move yeah so it's not like I tried to be like let me no, it was no, a, no. I don't I want to force a Kimura on you I'll tell I want to <laughs> here's what that I'll tell you exactly what that was That's Neil deGrasse Tyson is such a respected scientist yeah. and legitimate and deserved but he doesn't get that part of him, like that physically competitive part yeah. of him. He probably doesn't get to express that often because, yeah. again, he's always doing these intellectual interviews. And, and here you, a former champion, yeah. you, you can enjoy that with him and not oh. feel like he's being a... Bu- yeah, no, and it was also nice that because you explained it, you're a great teacher, so he appreciates that too. You can tell I also great. Yeah, this is what's so great about Matt because I know uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and I know Matt. And, you know, Matt's a killer. I mean, Neil's a great wrestler. Matt's a killer. <laughs> So watching them, I'm like, oh, Neil, don't try to... T- no. Oh, no. <laughs> He's funny. But He's Matt like, is such yeah, a good no, teacher. Yeah. He was showing him a Kimura. You put one on him. Yeah. Um, and then you were teaching him how to put one on you. But very yeah. encouraging. Yeah. And really, there's no ego with Matt when he no. chose. No, trains. no. I had him choke me, which I'll tell you, a couple other seconds. I hope I don't know if he knows the tap is the... <laughs> yeah. I should have let him know when I... Jimmy's like, oh, when he taps, you got to let go. He was loving the he was loving the the um the rear naked choke. Well, you, you know? and well, Matt showed Matt uh, sh- was showing it on me. 
Like yeah. he had me sit in the thing, and, yeah. and he was, he was in, I was the guinea pig, which was okay. And Matt showed up while it was very effective. But he put a tight one on you, right? Oh, it was beautiful. And yeah. with his height, he could just yeah put someone to sleep with you know very little effort. <laughs> just go right up behind him, and it's like a V. I was just explaining how. You know, it stops like the blood flow. It doesn't cut off the air. You know, it's not going on the windpipe. That's how, like, that's how like police officers and you know when they do the wrong. I know they're not allowed to to, to choke people and strangle people, but sure. the problem is they don't know how to properly do it. I believe that they should be allowed to, to choke somebody, but it should be they should every police officer should be police officer or anybody in law enforcement should be at least a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It should be a requirement, and that way they could do it. Put it's the gentle art. Your guy falls right to sleep. But the problem is people end up fighting for their life and then they just put on something that they've seen on TV or they don't have it quite right. Am I getting off the topic? No. <laughs> You're talking about... But Neil, he he saw the technique in it. And that's, sure. what I, that's what I wanted to show him. And uh, what a fun... That was fun. I've never asked him about any of that stuff. I've talked to him a bunch. We never mm. talked about... That's very interesting. Uh, him almost being a stripper, yeah. and getting a knife pulled on him. Just to hear him talking about race... Because yeah. I've never heard him discuss it. Yeah. It was fascinating. His views on racism. Really interesting guy. I mean, he's great. Can I tell you, when I, when I heard he was coming in, I always liked... I've seen him on Joe Rogan before and i seen him on some stuff. And he is. He does make it fun. Like... He makes it interesting, and he makes actually like stuff that could be maybe born for some people fun, you know, which with the out with everything with with the uh, the galaxy and galaxies and every, oh, everything we're talking about galaxies, Matt. Yes, well, there's a hundred galaxy I'm talking about. I don't know what the fuck. I'm talking about. But anyway, I thought I'd be just way out of the conversation, but he made that was very fun. I enjoyed having him in here. Yeah, I did have that one space question though, and he answered it. Yeah, oh, yeah. But I was curious. That was the exact one I was going to ask him. I know. <laughs> no, you should ask him to explain the Big Bang. You would have ran. I'd rather him. explain Kamora's. I understand. <laughs> And sh him show me his cradles. That was fun to watch. Uh, that guy we have five minutes of video. Um, I can't wait to see some. I, of that. I can't wait to send some of this out. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to. Uh, and he was catching on quick because I didn't. I put it on him, but I did not use you to show him how to set up that Kimura. No. You know. I, we're gonna. Play. So it takes a little bit, and I showed him a variation of a, a Kimura that. That I really been killing with lately, like when I'm side, on side control, people will say, and I invite the guy up, and then I do basically a sit through. I call it a sit through Kimura. I sit through, and I find the arm right there. And uh, it, what happens is it takes the other arm out of the equation. So we, yeah, I have my two arms to your one, and it's easy to get behind the back. And I think he was digging it. I really do. I think he was he was enjoying it because he felt yeah. it. You know, I'm, I, I think that's a great <laughs> picture to tweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Look at that! Oh. The best he's got me face down. He's on top of me. He got both my wrists. Like, uh, hey, by the way, Neil, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I met him literally 20 minutes ago. But uh, we will hug him when it was over. It was that was great. fun. That was, that was uh, fun, dude. one of my favorite, probably my favorite interview I've ever done with him. And uh, well, I guess, uh, listen, man, that was a great one. I'm seeing you, uh, you know, a couple days and then I go to Europe. Wow. So uh, I'm going to send this video by the time you're hearing this. <laughs> yes. The video, I'm sure, is up somewhere. Yeah. We're actually going to ask Dana to retweet this. Folks. I think it's really funny, and I think yeah. you will. Um, I think that was a good time. I was so great. I we should send yours too, right? Yeah, I took. I was on a different angle, but yeah, we got. Maybe we can combine the two. Is there sure. anybody at UFC that could combine the yeah, two? Yeah, I'm going to send it to everybody. They're going to they're gonna have it. Yeah. Yeah, what a good one. time, man. Yeah, because I'm uh, Matt's, Matt's funny line. Nice to meet you, Neil. <laughs> was very <laughs> funny. Do I have that here? Oh, I, I forgot you were taping. Oh, no, that's funny. <laughs> all right, um, yeah, man. All right. I'm oh, what, you got it, it on there? I, I, I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, I well, send me that too, because people are going to want to. 